So that shirt may very well be a sign that the Steelers are going to win a Super Bowl. You just may not be alive to see it. I believe I believe the Cowboys will win probably two or three before you win one. So at the end, I'm going to have him give this book out. Look, a lot of people don't like to read. Raise your hand if you're here if you really, really, really like to read. A couple people, that's good. Good, so you should have a problem with this. Raise your hand if you're like me and you don't really like to read. So it's about even. But it's only, you can, you can, you can, you could take 20 minutes and read this book or you could read it during each commercial of your show and it could be done. Um, chapter number one, why we should go. Chapter number two, how to go. Chapter number three, don't be stingy with the gospel. All of us that are saved in here that do not give the gospel, we're being stingy with the gospel. It's like somebody being out there drowning and we have a life preserver and that's not tossing it out to them. Amen. Yeah. And then uh, four tips on how to lead someone to the Lord navigating through the Bible. I'm going to go over some of that stuff. Um, I'm ha happy to be here. I'm thankful to be here. I was supposed to be here for the missions conference, but it didn't work out. And the preacher still still allowed me to come. Uh, most preachers would have said, eh, probably not. But your preacher allowed me to come and my wife as well. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful to be able to um, talk about Soul and Brother Hart probably do just as good, if not better than me. Your pastor probably do. Well, I don't know. He is a Steelers fan, but he could probably do <laughs> just as good as me. I'm not going to be super animated. I'm just going to I'm just going to I'm just going to give it to you simple. So you, a lot of your themes have been go, right? Something with your mission conference was go. The title of my book is go. We're going to turn to um, Mark uh, 16, 15. And I would like you guys to stay engaged with me. If you choose to flip through scripture, that's up to you. You can flip through the scripture. If you want to just stay engaged with me, that, that would be good. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to preach. I thank you for this uh, wonderful church, Lord. And I'm just asking that you would help the hearts to be spongy and soak up the message in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I love this church. I love these people. This is one of my favorite churches to be at. This church could be on an island or this church could be at a, in, a war, in the middle of a war zone. It'd still be one of my favorite churches. I say that so, so you don't think that I think this is my favorite church because it's on this island. I, I love these this. I love this island, but I love this church. I love these people. I love you guys. I pray for you guys. Um, and I love your pastor and his wife. The Bible here says, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Amen. Here, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned, shall be damned. There's many people that have probably died already that we've passed by that we could have witnessed to that are damned to an eternal uh, hellfire because of you guys because of me that's that's not that's not the best thing amen um, my goal as an evangelist is to um, Reclaim backslidden Christians. My goal is to uh, uh, do my best to produce soul winners. My goal is to preach the gospel, and my goal is to help families and help churches and to be an encouragement to the to the preacher. My favorite thing to do on the in, on on earth is um, catching fish and catching men, being fishers of men, leading people to the Lord. If God said you can only do one thing as a Christian, I would choose to be a soul winner. That's what I that's what I love to do. That's that's where my heart is. Um, and let me say this. I have an awesome life. I was driving back from Missouri the other week and I thought to myself, my life is awesome. Now, don't miss this because materials are not what I'm trying to get at. So don't miss this. Um, I got it. I got a I got a Chevy Silverado. Um, real men drive Chevys. And then now I'm joking. But uh, we got a nice little camper. Somebody gave me a free boat. I got a nice little house. I got a great wife. I have healthy children. Um, I get to go all over the place. I'm going to Florida next week and I'm going to catch some good fish. But I'm going to Florida to preach. Fishing is going to be a bonus. I'm going to fish with my brother Sam tomorrow and his kids. But fishing is just a bonus. I've gotten to meet some of the best people on the planet. I've gotten to meet um, 16 year old ladies that have displayed more character than any grown woman that I've ever met in my life. 
I've got to see young men do the same thing. And I thought about it. How come my life is so awesome? And when it, it all boils down to my life is so awesome because I serve the Lord. Serving the Lord is what makes my life awesome. Amen. So some of you guys are sitting here with 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 lives that aren't the greatest. Some of you are sitting here with lives that are pretty good. Some of you guys are sitting here with lives that are excellent, but they can be better. Everybody's life can be better. Amen. There's nothing wrong with with having a better life. Amen. Especially if it's uh, if, if it's for the Lord. I believe one of the main reasons the Lord has had so much uh, grace in my life is because of my burden for souls. I sold drugs. I did a little bit of drugs. I walked across the street to a urban outfitter to get some shoes. Instead of the shoes, she gave me the gospel. I had to end up going to jail for a couple of uh, nonsense things. But in jail, I, I, I saw people and I didn't just see jailbirds. That's one reason why a lot of people don't get saved is because we walk around and we see waitresses and waiters and neighbors and girls and boys and big people, little people, skinny people, instead of seeing death. And that's what we should see every time we see a person, because it's appointed on a man wants to die after this, the judgment. We had to start seeing people. And I saw I saw people in that cell and I, and I, I, I didn't even know how to witness the people. I didn't even know how to pray. I, I prayed for somebody else in jail before I ever even prayed for myself. But as soon as I got out, I knew that what carried me through that time was the Lord. And I just started witnessing the best that I could. I would do a little bit here, a little bit there. And then I'll call my preacher. I talked to this guy, but I don't know what else to do. Could you come help me? And he would come and he would help me. But I truly believe that um, the reason that the Lord has had such mercy with me and grace with me is because of my burden for souls. Um, I was talking about how I love leading people to the Lord. The Bible says um, uh, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And my treasure is souls. Here's one of the big problems, though. Many in this room's treasure is their little kids. Or their wives or their husbands or their other family members or their car. Amen. Or their job. Amen. Or their house. And here's a bigger problem. Some of us that don't have those things are willing to do whatever we can do to get our treasures. We would work 50 hours a week, 70 hours a week to have our treasure, but we won't go out for one stinking hour on Saturday so that somebody could be saved. You know what doesn't need to be saved? Your car doesn't need to be saved. Your house doesn't need to be saved. Your materials don't need to be saved. The people on this island need to be saved. I've led more people to the Lord on this island than maybe this whole section over here. This whole section, that's kind of crazy. I've only been here twice. I'm, I'm not trying to say I am somebody special. I'm just saying this is your mission field. The people that are getting beaten and robbed and um, selling themselves and doing uh, all kind of crazy stuff that would stop if they got witness to and truly got saved because they would change like you changed when you got saved. There, it, 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 It's your field, not my field. Uh, listen. He that goeth forth, uh, that verse that I read was Mark 6, 21. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seeds, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Uh, that's Psalms 126, 6. He that goeth forth and weepeth. It says, he that goeth forth, then it talks about weepeth. Some people say, man, I just don't have the burden for souls. Or some people say, man, I really want to have a burden for souls. You need to go to get the burden for souls. You didn't like fishing until after the first time you went fishing. You didn't like the new cell phone until after you bought the cell phone and used the cell phone. You didn't like playing the guitar until you started playing the guitar. Amen. You didn't like this car until you bought the car. You didn't get the burden or the love until you did it. Some of you guys don't have the burden for souls because you haven't gone and caught that burden because you haven't gone. And some of you just say, Holy Spirit, please give me the burden. Please give me the burden, Holy Spirit. Don't ask the Holy Spirit to give you the burden. Just go and catch the burden. Amen. Come out there with us and go on Saturday. Man. Raise your hand if you love your preacher in here. He's got one simple request. Put your hands down. He's got one simple request that's going to cost you just a little bit of gas money and a little bit of time. He wants Saturday to be the biggest day that he's ever had here. You guys can help that. Meet that. Hey, he um, he would love Super Bowl tickets. It's going to be a lot cheaper for you to just to come and do this. And by the way, 
you paying Super Bowl tickets versus you going soul winning, uh, I believe the Lord's going to be a lot more pleased with that. If, 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 if we have this crowd, if we have this crowd go out and soul win and nobody gets saved, I believe the Lord will bless by bringing people into the church house. Something like that's going to happen. I see it all the time. We go out, nobody gets saved, and then we invite all these people, and then somebody comes in that we didn't even invite. All the time. Um, and let me say that we mustn't go alone. We must go with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to spend a little bit of time here. The Lord just gave me this yesterday. I'm like, I had something else, and I was good, you know, because I'm hopping. Out. I got up at 4:30. We got on the plane. We we went to taxi. They said it's going to be two minutes. Two minutes. I'm like, good. I'm going to get some food. I'm going to go to the bathroom, and then we'll get on the plane. We were there for 40 minutes. My wife says, our plane's boarding. So I'm passing by people. I said, our plane's leaving. Can you can we get by? Yes. The plane's leaving. Well, mine is too. I said, well, then you need to move. And if you're not going to move, then you move so I can move. You follow me. You're being a weak man. Just follow me. Let's go. <laughs> hey, you got to make it happen. So then we get there, and I ask the guy, how long do we have? He says, 10 minutes until the doors close. So no food, no nothing. And then we ate. I ate a burger on the flight, and the burger was fabulous. Top 10 burgers ever in my life off of a plane. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. Anyways, so so I say all that to say that um, I'm going to read some scripture here. Then I'm going to be engaged in these notes a little bit. But I want you to soak up everything. Turn with me to Acts 4 1. I'm talking about not going alone. I'm talking about going with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Acts 4 1. The Bible here says, and as they spake unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they had and they laid hands on them. They put some hands on them and uh, put uh, put them in hold until the next day, for it was now evident. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of uh, the men was about 5,000. Would you go out? Let me say this. If they could rewind to the beginning of this chapter and say, ah, we can either not go out and get hands put on us, or we can get some hands put on us and see 5,000 people saved, I dare say that they'd get the hands put on them and see 5,000 people saved. Would you take a beating so that somebody else could go to heaven? Would you take a beating so somebody else would go to heaven? And I'm seeing a lot of heads shake up and down. And that's wonderful. And if you shook your head up and down, that means I will see you here on Saturday. Right. Uh, then six says this. And Ananias or oh, 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 five. And it came to pass on the morrow that uh, their rulers and uh, and elders and scribes and Ananias, the high priest and uh, Caphias and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priests were gathered together at Jerusalem. So this is the who's who's. This is the, the decision makers. Seven says, and when they had set them in the midst, they asked by what power or by what name have you done this? Who do you think you are preaching this gospel? Uh, the Bible says in eight, then Peter filled with the what? Filled with the Holy Ghost said unto them, ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done uh, to the impotent man by what? means he is made whole be it known unto you <clears throat> excuse me be it known unto you all and to all the people of israel that by the name of jesus christ of nazareth whom ye crucified whom god raised from the dead even by him doeth this man stand here before you whole this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders which is become uh the head of the corner neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby ye must be saved. So they got him here. What are you doing? They're they're ridiculing him. They're 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 scrutinizing him for preaching the gospel and being filled with the Holy Ghost as they're ridiculing him for preaching the gospel. He preaches it right back to him. He tells them by no other name, by no other name. I'm not just going to get ahead of myself. I'll just I'll just stick to the notes here. The fact uh, that as believers, um, the fact that as believers, we have been commanded to go preach the word doesn't mean it's going to be easy. I've been able to lead many people to the Lord, but it's not always easy. 
uh, I, I can remember, and maybe I told a story here, maybe I didn't. I can remember being at the gym and seeing this young man, and uh, I came at a different time than I normally come. The man was there. Uh, the Holy Spirit said, witness to him. I said, I just want to lift weights, and he probably just wants to lift weights. I'm just going to let him be. And then I came back the next day at a different time, and the man was there at a different time the very next day. And the Holy Spirit said, witness to him. And I said, there's people around. They're going to see me. Ugh. But then I got down on my hands and knees and I prayed and asked the Holy Spirit to help me. And then as I rose to my feet, I said to myself, what an idiot. You're worried about people seeing you talk to this guy, but you're down on your hands and knees praying to God. <laughs> and then after I talked to the man, guess what happened? He got saved. Amen. It's not always going to be easy. I believe there is a spiritual warfare oftentimes when witnessing. Sometimes it comes during the witness. Sometimes it becomes before the witness. Sometimes after. Every time we go so winning corporately, corporately means whenever your church goes. And when those church doors are open... For soul winning, should we be here? When the church doors are open, period, should we be here, church? Amen. Mm. Uh, whenever we go corporately or on our day-to-day -day life, man, I just want to ask the question. Um, we don't even need to raise hands. But how many of you have, have led somebody to the Lord this year? How many of you have tried to lead somebody to the Lord this year? How many of you have handed out tracts this year when it, when it was just you on your own? How many of you have handed out more than five or ten? Every time that we pass somebody by, it's just like saying you can go to hell. And sometimes just handing out tracts isn't enough. I, I Especially when, when, when God gives you an icebreaker and, and there's a conversation struck up. Somebody asks you about your church or somebody asks you something spiritual. Many times when people ask you something spiritual, they're looking for something they're looking for something, and you can always point them straight to Christ. Amen? Yeah. I remember my buddy Winnie. He fell off a tower, a water tower, boom, and died. But the day before that, I gave him a track. So in heaven, Winnie opened his, his eyes and said, thank the Lord that Todd gave me the track, and I read it, and I got saved. Or in hell, he said, why on earth did you just read me the track? I would have listened to it, and I wouldn't be burning in hell right now. So sometimes... Just handing out the track isn't enough. Amen? Amen. And it's not always easy. Every time we go soul winning uh, corporately or in our day to day life, uh, we have to set ourselves up for a fight against the wicked forces of evil in high places, which would have all people go to an eternal uh, destruction. Sometimes listen to this. And this is what we struggle with a lot, myself included. Sometimes the people that are going to give us the biggest fight uh, is the ones that are close to us, our family members. Um, Matthew 10, uh, 34, 37 says, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I come not to send peace, but a sword for I am come to set a man at uh, variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter in law against her mother in law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth uh, father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Now, that's a pretty hard saying right there. Uh, but it demonstrates that soul winning is a matter of life and death. Soul winning for our, our loved ones is a matter of life and death. Listen, following the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, his disciples were eager to go out and uh, start preaching about what they had heard uh, and seen. However, Christ told them not to rush because he knew that if they embarked on an evangelic, uh, uh, evangelistic campaign without being empowered by the Holy Spirit, their zeal, their zeal would soon dissipate and they would not do much and wouldn't even be able to stand the persecution uh, that was um, most definitely going to come. And here's one of my biggest problems with this thing of persecution. Uh... What kind of persecution? Raise your hand if you've ever went soul winning, ever. Raise your hand if you've ever witnessed anybody. Okay, good. Have you ever been thrown in jail because of it? Have you ever been punched in the face because of it? Have you ever been whipped because of it? Hmm. So I, I just, I just wonder, what are the deterrents? What are the deterrents? What are the deterrents? And why don't we see the importance of having the Holy Holy Ghost power, the Holy Ghost Spirit with us when we go? Many men would rather have power over men than have the Holy Spirit power. Many men would rather have the mighty dollar. 
I would rather have somebody working for me. I would rather be able to um, um, own this and do this and have men look at me as this and this and this and this and this. And I went through all that. I went through all that. I could have stayed fighting. I could have stayed doing this. I could have stayed making the money. I could have stayed signing autographs and doing this and doing that and doing this. But I chose to do what God wanted me to do. And I sat there last week signing Bibles. 30 minutes, they stood in line to sign Bibles and ask questions. And I thought to myself, man, this beats signing anybody's jersey, anybody's jersey or anybody's gloves, that they're just going to fade. They're going to who knows what's going to happen to those. They're not going to remember where they're at in five years, but they're going to know where their Bible's at in five years. Amen. Amen. The power. Um, the Holy Spirit gives us knowledge. He's our teacher. Um, he can comfort us. He gives us great comfort and he'll lead us if you'll allow him to lead you. Amen. Uh for a long time, people have associated uh, receiving the filling of the Holy Ghost with uh, goosebumps or, or speaking in tongues, which is that's a whole nother sermon. Uh, but there's so much more to the Holy Spirit. His key roles include empowering the believer to be a witness for Christ. Have you been a witness for Christ? How have you been doing that being a witness for Christ? Um One of the reasons some of us don't get deliverance is because we're just not right with God. We're not right with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says if you draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Right. So if you're if you're if you're pushing yourself away from God, do you think he's going to push himself on you? So here's what happens. Here's God. Here's me pushing myself away, pushing myself away, pushing myself away, pushing myself away. And then I want to get deliverance. So many of you guys are standing in, sitting in here. You have you have you have every, we all have issues, myself included. But there's many people in here with addictions. But they're so far away from God, when, when, when they take a step close to him, he's still super far away. Then they take another step, he's still far away, even though he's drawing nigh to us. And then we can't get any deliverance over our problems. The Holy Spirit power is the reason that I'm able to fly across the, fly across the Pacific and, and be here and stand up and preach. I begged him on the plane every time I woke up. My wife said I got some sleep, but I don't remember getting any sleep. Please fill me. Please help me to give the people exactly what they need for me to give them. Please, Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm, I'm begging you. If we all if we all none of us, none of us let our let our phone run out of power. Not one of us. Man, we're scrambling to find something to get our phone plugged in. But we don't want to plug into this book. And as a result of that, an indirect result of that is people dying and going to hell. And some sit in here and say, I can't do it, or I'm no good at it, or I don't want to do it. You know what? There's been many days. I, I, the last time, well, this only happened to me once. I said to myself, I'm not going soul winning today because I witness everywhere I go. So why do I have to go soul winning with the church on Saturday? And then I thought to myself, well, the Holy Spirit said, is it ever a bad time to go soul winning? I said, no. He says, he said, don't, don't you preach that when the doors are open, you should be there? I said, yes. So then I went and we were able to lead some kids to the Lord. Now, had I not gone, who knows what would have happened? I have a lot more on the Holy Spirit, but we're just going to move on uh, to my next point, which is don't let anxiety stop you. So many of us let anxiety stop us. And if it's not anxiety, it's excuses that stop us. Don't let anxiety stop you. Don't let excuses stop you. Amen. Uh, turn to Acts 16, 19. And look. This may be the most simple message that you hear all year, but really, witnessing is pretty simple. It's just about us going. Uh, 16, 19. We're talking about anxiety here. Um, so here we see uh, demons cast out of this woman and uh uh, a couple men that were making money off this lady get pretty upset about them casting the demons out of her. The Bible says in, in 19, and when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, uh, neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up to gather against them. Now, if a multitude rose up to gather against you, you'd have a little bit of anxiety, right? 
and the magistrates rent off their clothes. So if a mob of people comes, they beat you, and then they strip you naked, that's going to be a little bit more anxiety. Uh, and then they commanded them to be beat. And when they had laid many stripes on them, uh, after they whooped the fire out of them, they cast them into the inner prison, um, uh, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in stocks. So not only are they whooped and stripped, they're not only they're put in the prison, but the inner prison, and then their feet are made in stocks. Listen, I don't know about you, but if I was locked up with a bunch of other people that were locked up, I'd at least want to be able to move around. Uh, and 25 says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises. And what they were praying for was of deliverance. And God used an earthquake to deliver them. Uh, prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep, receiving, uh, awaking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison's door open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. Um, and 30 says, And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. So had they let their anxieties uh, stop them, um, as soon as they drew near a crowd, they probably would not have been a witness. Number one. Number two, after they got after they got beat down for for um, for witnessing, they probably would have just clammed up. That's what a lot of us may, may have done. And then. Definitely. How many of you? How many of you would witness to the man that locked you up? And then put you in the inner prison and then in the stocks. And not only did he lead that man to the Lord, but he led that whole man's family to the Lord. And you know how we can do that? We can do that by seeing people the way that God wants us to see people. Amen. Now, there's some new people in here, so I'm going to share this story. I don't know if I shared it or not. The Holy Spirit says share it. So I'm going to listen to him. It's good to listen to the Holy Spirit, by the way. Amen. Amen. And it's good to see you, brother. Um. I was I was I saw this man come on the TV screen, accessory to commit murder. He watched. He allowed his wife to starve his kid to death. And they gave him life and they gave her life. I asked the Holy. I asked God, I said, send him to the pod that I'm going to be in. In the very next day, there he was. And I went over to this man. He was humongous, but he had his soft demeanor. He didn't look like no killer. And he looked like he was very sorrowful for what he had allowed to happen. And I, I walked up to him and I, I introduced myself to him and I and I presented the gospel to him. Everybody was staying away from him. Um, I believe that if he would have ventured over this way, he would have got stomped. I believe if he would have went over, went over that way, he would have got stomped. Right here was the um, they called this uh, the projects. That was where all the black fellas sat. And then there was a trailer park. That's where all the white fellas sat. And then there was a country. And that was just a mix of everybody. And then there was just the other tables like. The off brand guys. I don't know what you want to call them. <laughs> and he was staying away from all of that stuff. He was tucked back in his bunk. And I said to him, I gave him the gospel and I, I, I took about 20 minutes to do so. When we're witnessing the people, we need to be thorough about it. Um, and a man had to go off because his lawyer called him. So he, he took off and I was like, man, there goes my opportunity. Only five minutes later, he comes back and said, hey, would you like to get saved? Would you like to trust Christ as your Lord and Savior? I said, did you understand this? Yes. Did you understand this, 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 this? Yes. I said, did you believe all that wholeheartedly? And then I went through Romans 10, 9 and 10, and I asked him if you'd like to trust Christ as Lord and Savior. And he bowed his head like, you have no idea what I've done. I said, listen, sir, I see you bowing your head like you don't. I have no clue what you've done. I said, I know what you've done. And part of me wants to call the fellas over here and stomp a mud hole in you. I'm just being honest. But lucky for you, Christ died even for your sin. And if you would like to trust Christ as your Lord and Savior right here, right now, you can. And he's just bowed his head. I said, listen, here's what's going to happen to you. You're going to spend the rest of your life in hell. And then you're going to die and you're going to go to hell for an eternity. Or you can put your trust and faith into Christ. I said, I'm not going to I'm not going to force you. And I begin to step. And I asked him if you'd like to trust Christ. And he said, yeah, I would. And that man got saved. And now had I seen the man the way I wanted to see the man, he would have just probably got a beat down and he, he who knows where he's at now. And some he's in some federal penitentiary. But we've got to start seeing people the way Christ sees people. Amen. Um, 
And then number two, we must go with the or number three, we must go with the right motives. A lot of times we go because we don't want the preacher to, to bug us. A lot of times we go because my dad wants me to go or my father in law wants me to go or or whatever the case is. We, we need to go for the right motives um, and we can't go just one, two, three, say a prayer with me. He's saved. I got this guy saved. I got this guy saved. People die and go to hell that way. We've got to uh, uh, we've got to get people to understand the condition that they're in. You got to understand they need to understand that they're lost. They have to understand that if they die without Christ, they're going to go to hell. They have to understand that um, there, there's there's a payment for sin. And if that payments uh, and, uh, uh, and then we have to get them to understand that Christ died for everybody, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But we can't just rush it. So we have to have the right motives. And then we must go willing to teach others. One of the main reasons people don't want to go soul winning is because they don't know how. It kills me that we have people. There's people all across this island that could um, men and women that could uh, uh, build a house from scratch, take a car apart, put it back together, bake a cake from scratch, sew clothes from scratch. But those same people couldn't teach anybody how to lead somebody to the Lord. And that's what really matters. Amen. Ephesians 4.11, and he gave some apostles and some uh, prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. The word perfect in this, in this, in this sense means to become highly skilled in doing things that will fulfill the Great Commission. We must put an amber alert out for the lost people. What happens when a little kid gets lost? We're frantically trying to look for him. Amen. We need to put that. We need to have that same kind of concern for for people that are lost and dying and on their way to hell. Amen. Uh, and then let me say, we need to be sure that we're doing our part to fulfill the whole commission, not just leading people to the Lord, getting them in, getting them baptized and getting them planted and getting them rooted. Come up here for a minute, preacher. So now I'm just going to give uh, a tip on. Uh, or some tips on, on, on leading people to the Lord. So in my Bible, and this is something that everybody can do, and you can use your own verses. You can use the, the verses that are on your track. Um, you can use the verses that God gives you. So in my Bible, I'll turn to, I'll turn to John uh, 14, 6. Um, and here's what I do a lot of times. I say, hey, I got the million dollar question for you. You say, what's that? Do you know for sure if you were to die, if you'd go to heaven or not? No. No. Okay. Now say yes. Yes. Okay. Well, let's say I worked with you. If I worked with you and I asked you how I could know for sure heaven was my home, what would you say to me? And right there, they're either going to give me a solid Bible answer or they're going to say, well, I don't know. Or they're going to say something that's a little bit off. And every time they say something that's a little bit off or not solid, I tell them, according to your answer, you're going to go to hell, not according to my uh, not not according to what I think, but according to what the scripture says. It's a good way to get people's attention. It may be a little too direct for you. Use whatever method works for you. I'm just saying that works for me because we're dealing with somebody's soul here. Amen. Holding somebody, having somebody's soul uh, in, in a balance is, is, a, is a wonderful and, 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 and a precious thing. The bottom line is everybody here um, has the capability to lead somebody to the Lord. Without even using the, this, without even holding the Bible in their hand, those of you that are saved can just tell people what happened to you. So here's something that I'll do. I'll ask them that, and then I'll say, "Okay, well, here's what the Bible says." Jesus Himself speaks, and He says, "Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me." And then I'll explain the verse. So what this verse here simply means is there's not enough good works you can do to get to heaven. There's not enough good works that I can do to get to heaven. If if I could get to heaven. Um, then Jesus never would have needed to die that terrible death that he died for you and that he died for me. They took a cat of nine tails and they, they whipped it in him. They pulled it out. They 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 uh, they mocked him. They plucked him. They put that crown of thorns on him. He went through an awful, terrible, horrible death. And if and if he um, if we could just get ourselves to heaven, then there would have been no need for him to go through all that. So God's plan of salvation states that we need to first understand that Jesus is the only way to get there. The world says 
that all you have to do is be a good person to go to heaven. But the Bible says you got to put your trust and faith in the Christ. And I would much rather take the Bible's way to heaven. And then right here in my Bible, I have the next verse that I'm going to turn to Romans 3:23, And I have the page number in case I'm I'm a little nervous or I'm fumbling or stumbling. I can just go right to the next page number. Romans 3:23. So I'll tell him that Jesus is the way. Then we'll go to Romans 3:23. And the Bible here says, uh, for the wages of sin, uh, for all have sinned and came short of the glory of God. Um, do you know what a sin is? Yeah. Um, so tell me what's a sin. We do something wrong. We do something wrong. Have you ever did anything wrong? Yeah. Yep. And me too. And here's one that I like to use. I'll say, um, I'll say, uh, uh, if 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 I were to rob a bank, what would what would people call me? A bank robber. A bank robber. If I only rob one bank, they'd still call me a bank robber? Yes, they'd call me a bank robber. Um, have you ever told a lie before? Yes. That's the easiest one to use, especially when dealing with kids. By the way, some of you guys that have problems dealing with adults, but don't have problems dealing with kids, lead kids to the Lord. Some people don't like looking people in the eyes. You know what my dad told me? Because I had that issue. He said, just look at them in the eyebrows. I'm looking right at your eyebrows. You can't tell the difference. I'm looking at you right in your eyebrows. You can't tell the difference. Hey, not 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 funny. I'm really trying to help. I, I want to see the people uh, here on Saturday. Um, and by the way, if you tell the preacher I'm not comfortable talking, he'll pair you up and you can just be a silent partner. You can pray and you can watch and you can learn. That's what happened to me. Um, so for all have sinned and came short of the glory of God. Uh, you, 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 you've told a lie, you go through that stuff, you go, you get them to understand that they're a sinner. And look, some people are just not going to understand that they're sinners. Some kids aren't going to understand that they're a sinner. We, I can't force him to get saved. Amen. Some people just aren't there, but you don't leave it at that. You get an address, you get a phone number, you pray for them, you follow up on them. So then I have, um, here, um, Romans 6, 23 or page uh, 1119. So I'll turn over to 623. And I'll read. For the wages of sin is death. The payment for your sin is death and hell. The payment for my sin is death and hell. If you die without Jesus Christ, according to the Bible, not according to me, and that's another thing that's important. A lot of people think that it's what you think. We gotta, we gotta make sure that they don't think that we're being haughty or that we're better than anybody. The, the payment for your sin, the payment for my sin, the Bible says, the wages for sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We can accept Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, and um, one way that we can do that is by understanding that. Um, Christ died for all of us. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not might be saved, but shall be saved. And then I'll, I'll take them to, there's some other scriptures that I'll go through, but for, for sake of time, I'll take them to Romans 10, 9, and uh, 10. The Bible here says, in Romans 10, 9, and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth in the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That if thou shalt confess, do you know what they mean there by confess? And many people don't. So I'll tell them, confess, talk to God, pray to God, that if thou shalt pray or confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in the heart that God has risen from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So then I'll tell them. So right here, right now, if you'd like to, you could trust Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You could say a prayer with me. And that's another place where a lot of people get lost. You can say a prayer with me. One, two, three, repeat a prayer after me and you're going to go to heaven. It's not a prayer. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, and shalt believe in their heart. And I'll point to my heart, I'll point to their heart. You can make a heartfelt decision right now between you and God and you could trust Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And many times they'll say, sure, I'd like to do that. And, and, and a lot of times people are just not comfortable praying themselves so i could say i could lead you in a prayer i could lead you in a model prayer or you could say your own prayer i could lead you in a model prayer but you got to understand um that it's not the prayer that i'm saying that's going to save you it's you praying to god that's going to save you simple it's just as simple as that and how much time did that take that didn't take much time and here's here's what here's what really here's what really kills me thanks that's it here's what really bothers me is there's people that are so thirsty for the gospel here on this island and there's people that are even dehydrated for the gospel here on this island. Last, last, the last time that I was here, 
Me and the preacher pulled up around the corner. We were going out to eat. And there was a man sitting down smoking a cigarette. I said, could you pull over? We pulled over. I sat down. I talked to him. He got saved. We went to a restaurant on the other side of the island. I, I, the waitress was there. I said, do you have a minute? Could I ask you uh, about, about where you're going when you die? She was like, I, I'm busy. I said, okay. So she came back around. I said, are you either going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell when you die? Do you know for sure which way you're going to go? And she took off and she came back and she said, you know what? I'm not sure. And I was able to lead her to the Lord. Um, uh, I was at a garage sale on your island and I talked to a man and I said, hey, and he said, hey, I said, where are you going when you die? He said, what do you mean? I said, you're going to go to heaven. Or you're going to go to hell. Do you know where you're going to go? He said, I'm going to heaven. I said, OK, if I worked with you and I gave him the spiel and he said, um, well, I'm Catholic. And I said, well, according to the Bible, that answer is going to take you straight to hell. That was a man that was on your island. I saw a man sitting across the street over there. I sat down and I talked to him. I asked him if he knew where he was going when he di died. He said, I'm going to heaven. He said, I used to be a preacher on the big island. And he gave me a good, clear plan of salvation. But you know what? I listened to the Holy Spirit. I was able to lead about, I, I think, 26 people to the Lord just out day to day. In 14 days. In 14 days. On your island. Not on my island. On your island. Not on my island. Um, I just want to encourage everybody. The preacher does, isn't telling everybody to come go soul winning. He's trying to encourage everybody to come soul winning. And that may have been one of the worst messages that you've ever heard. Um, but I just preached it exactly how the Lord wanted me to preach it. And I, I, I urge you to come and go soul winning with us. I'm going to read this poem and, and then I'll be done. Um, maybe. My wife typed it. I was going to blame her, but I found it. So she's off the hook. It says, who in hell needs you to go knock on a door? Who was on bended knee praying the night before? What inspired me to write that was it was the hottest day of the year. Two years ago. Me and my assistant pastor, we went and knocked on uh, five doors. Nobody answered. We're dripping in sweat. I'm thinking, man, nobody's even want to open a door for us. We're just leaking. We, we said we're going to knock on one more door. If somebody answers, then uh, uh, we'll witness. And if nobody answers, we're leaving. We knocked on the door. The door swings open. We tell them who we are. The man invites us in, like kind of urgently. And I'm like, oh, man, we, I got no pistol on me. This could be a situation. <laughs> he sits us down. He said, this is crazy. Last night, we were on our hands and knees at our bedside praying and asking for God to show us something. And then here you are right on my doorstep. And you know what happened? He got saved. And then his wife came. She got saved. And then her two kids got saved while me and my wife were in a junior church. And then uh, was it last year? Last year, the rest of his kids came and they got saved. Who in hell needs you to go knock on the door? Who was on bended knee praying the night before, crying and sobbing as tears hit the floor? Is it someone like the rich man who's already condemned to an eternity of weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth that will never, ever end? Trapped by the great golf fix, never to see loved ones, never to see friends. Who on earth needs you to reach their loved ones miles away? Who needs you to be a faithful soul winner so their prayers can be answered that they pray? Prayers of loved ones being saved so they can embrace the blessed hope when their loved one is laid in a grave. Oftentimes we become scared when we try on our own to see people save but if we go with the comforter he will give us strength to be brave a soul winner for christ equals people walking in the newness of life angels will rejoice if they make the right choice so get on the mission to fulfill the great commission amen, amen. look a lot of us a lot of us a lot of us just aren't comfortable soul winning just think about the last time you started a new job that first day you walked in there were you comfortable but after four, five, six, seven days, were you comfortable? That's what will happen here with soul winning. And what kills me is persecution doesn't happen here. Here's the most persecution that, that we face. A door getting slammed in our face. Can we not handle a door getting slammed in our face? But it's really not even the persecution. What it is is selfishness. I would rather sit on my couch then get out and witness to people. I would rather be at a softball game or a basketball game or a, a volleyball game. Or I'd rather be out on the kayak, I'd rather be out on the ocean than, than see somebody saved. I'd rather be at a family function with my family, have them missing out on what God has for somebody else, than go soul winning. 
It's selfishness. We just can't be selfish. It's a shame that people go to hell because of our selfishness. So on that note, I want to encourage you to help make one of your preacher's wishes come true. He just wants to see the most people that's ever been out soul winning come out on this Saturday. I, 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 is, is that an unreasonable request? Hmm, I wonder how many times the preachers move things around for people here at the church house. So I wonder if you could move something around so that you could be here on Saturday for the preacher. Yes. 